Hey everyone, it's actually Jeb Bush, and I know it has been way too long since I've made my last video. But Sober just dropped a blog describing what the plans are for the NBA playoffs, so I thought it would be a great time to go ahead and take a deeper dive into that, and maybe even talk a little bit of strategy. So as you can see, I pulled up the blog, and we have the Sober Championship Chase this year. Now, if we scroll down, it talks about the game week schedule, and we're going to come back to this when we talk about strategy because I think there's a couple important things we want to note. Uh, but the most important thing we want to talk about here is the format and competitions. Now, Sober is doing something similar to what they did last year, but I feel like they've really taken this to the next level, and I'm pretty excited about it. So as usual, they'll have the game week competitions as always in the playoffs where you can win, you know, your limited cards, maybe some extra prizes. But there will also be a playoff long leaderboard that these contests from every game week are going to feed into. Now, right off the bat, one thing I kind of like here is that SoRare is only requiring one of the newer season cards per lineup. In the past, we've seen two or even three required but I think one is very, very reasonable here, and I, I really like that. Now, if we scroll down, we can see that we will have the typical core contests for every game week. Uh, we have the pickup and then the contender and champion for all the different tiers. Uh, and if we continue to scroll, though, we can see the most exciting part, in my opinion, there is going to be a $100,000 in total cash rewards across both gameplay formats. I think it's pretty exciting that not only will you get rewarded if you crush in a specific game week, but if you're performing consistently, you can go ahead and climb up that leaderboard and get some valuable prizes as well. Now, scrolling down further, we see the allocation of funds for the various contests, and then we get to the card segment. Now, every game week that you play during the playoffs, you have a chance to win the regular edition cards that we've been winning all regular season. However, in the championship chase, you have a chance to win special edition playoff cards. If you want, you can go ahead and read about it more in the blog. But I think the most important part here is the fact that, you know, these cards are part of the minting limit. They explain it here where if there's a standard edition, 52 out of 100 for a rare, then the special edition could be number 53. So this is not adding to the circulation. This is all planned at the beginning of the season by so rare which you know we love. We love scarcity, we love consistency, and we love that the rules are staying the same here. Finally, the last two segments here talk about the prizes that you can win. One is by performing well, once again, the championship chase, the playoff long leaderboard here. Top performers will clinch VIP packages to their choice of a marquee NBA event, uh, and they list some really exciting games, uh, this in-season tournament, the Paris game, or the All-Star game, which are all events that I think any basketball fan would love to attend. Additionally, there are going to be some other awesome prizes on top of the cash and the VIP experiences for the top performers. There are going to be player-worn jerseys, signed merch, and other items from the so rare ambassadors, such as Paolo, Donovan Mitchell, Jalen Brunson, uh, the guys you've been seeing all year. Additionally, once again, this is very exciting to me, a few items from a certain top rookie will also be in the prize pool. I think we can all read between the lines here and assume that there are going to be some awesome Wimby prizes as well, which, as always, if you're a basketball fan, any sort of Wimby collectible I think is pretty awesome to have. And finally, we get to the last segment, which is the NBA Playoffs Collection event. So let's say that you want to participate and try to win some cool prizes, but you don't think you necessarily have the cards to stack up in the championship chase. Well, you can collect cards from either last season or this season of players that are in the playoffs. The two most important pieces of this segment is right here where we can see that all collections are in play, whether they're from last year or this year. And then that you need to collect the cards from any of the 16 NBA playoff teams. Play-in teams are watching from the sidelines and won't be a part of this event. So for everyone participating in this collection event, two lucky managers will be chosen to attend a conference final game of their choice. Not only will you get to pick the game, but we're also throwing a $1,000 travel voucher for each winner to get there in style. So if you're a Celtics fan and you live in Montana... This would be an awesome opportunity to get your flights and hotel paid for uh, and get to attend the Eastern Conference Finals watching your favorite team. And I would imagine these seats are going to be pretty nice as well. So I think this is a super awesome opportunity. 
especially if you're someone who already has a decent sized collection and feel like maybe you don't have the cards that are needed to really make a push in the playoff long leaderboard. I will say I'm interested to see how these two lucky managers are chosen and what are the criteria. Is every card just considered almost like a raffle ticket? Do cards from last year and cards from this year, are they the same value in that sense? Or are they? is there a difference value? If you have a Jokic from this year as opposed to you know a Franz Wagner from this year or a Peyton Pritchard from this year, uh, are those going to hold different values uh, in the selection process? I'm also really curious if those special edition playoff cards we just talked about uh, will hold any sort of special value for this collection event. That would be interesting to dive into and kind of find the optimal play to increase your chances. And, you know, maybe I'll make a video about it, but most likely I'll make a post on my YouTube or Twitter or something like that uh, trying to break it down. So you know, make sure you subscribe or follow me on Twitter because uh, I'm going to be very interested in following this and see if there's a chance for me to, you know, increase my my chances because I already have a pretty decent sized sower collection. I think I have over 200 cards and a good chunk of them are going to be in the playoffs this year. So yeah, we'll we'll follow that and see how that develops. And finally, some of these so rare ambassadors uh, are going to be having giveaways and such on Instagram and Twitter. Uh, such as Donovan Mitchell, Jalen Brunson, Palo, and Worldwide Wob. Uh, so I would recommend you go follow those guys uh, if you want a chance at winning NBA playoff tickets and more. Free giveaways are awesome, and if you hit on one of those, it's, it's pretty dope. All right, now that we covered the blog, we're going to scroll up to the top and take a look at the game weeks. So last year we did a pretty lengthy live stream where we not only dove into the strategy of these game weeks a bit, but really highlighted a lot of players that we thought might be a sneaky value or might uh, be kind of being overlooked for the playoffs. So I'm not going to highlight any players this year, and that's because I think the marketplace is just in a very different spot than it was last year. Last year for the playoffs, if you had a player's card before a specific date, before the playoffs started, that card got a 25% boost. So that made it really important to kind of look ahead and try and pick your shots before uh, that boost went away. On top of that, the marketplace was in a really different place last year where even, you know, solid role players who had consistent minutes going into the playoffs were selling for a very high inflated price. So it made a lot of sense for us to really dive in and try and find some deals. But fast forward to this year, and besides the cream of the crop like Jokic or Giannis or Embiid or SGA, uh, a lot of the cards are pretty affordable and very reasonably priced. So because of those two factors, I just don't think it's worth doing a super deep dive and trying to get ahead of the curve here. I think the playoffs this year on SoRare are going to be a lot more exciting in the sense that you're not going to be locked into the cards that you have before the playoffs start. It'll be a lot easier to buy certain cards to fill in holes to make sure you have competitive lineups if you're really trying to climb up that playoff long leaderboard for the championship chase. So now with all that out of the way, let's talk about game week 49. Not only do I think this game week could be crucial for the playoff long leaderboards, but I think if you have a sound understanding of how this is going to work, you might have a real leg up in the actual competitions for the specific game week. All right, so I pulled up the playoff bracket, and this shows the current situation if the season ended today. Now, it's totally possible that especially one of these 10 seeds, like the Warriors or the Hawks, maybe gets bumped out and replaced with someone else. But the strategy we're talking about really applies to whatever teams end up in the playing games. And the basis of the strategy is that on each side, two teams will play one game and two teams will play two games. Your lineup building should revolve around trying to pick players that are going to play two games instead of one, because then you have two chances to get their ceiling as opposed to one for this game week. So once the bracket is finalized and you know exactly who's playing, you need to determine who you think is going to win in each 9-10 matchup and who you think is going to lose in each 7-8 matchup. So for example, if I think the Hawks are going to beat the Bulls here, then I would probably want to play a player like DeJounte Murray or maybe Okongwu or Sadiq Bey, just some of these other players on this team that will have a chance to hit their ceiling twice. Now, ultimately, you're going to have to decide who you think is going to play these two games and who is only going to play one game. 
I think one way that might help is to look at the Vegas lines and see who's favored uh, and who's the underdog, where you're going to want to choose the underdog in the 7-8 situation and the favorite in the 9-10 situation. Now, I know I mentioned DeJounte Murray when I talked about the Hawks as an example, but I think this strategy is the most important when it comes to the role players. Most likely, the cards in your lineup with the highest caps are going to put up great numbers, whether they play one or two games. You know, Jimmy Butler, Bam Adebayo, Tyrese Maxey, DeJounte Murray, Steph, AD, LeBron, KD, Booker, Sabonis, Fox, et cetera, et cetera. There's a very good chance they put up a solid number that you're very happy with. However, it's those role players with the lower caps that you squeeze into your lineups to finish them off that probably need those two games to have the best chance at putting up a higher score. You know, a Grayson Allen, a Malik Monk, a Draymond Green, a Clay Thompson, a Rui Hachimura, an Austin Reeves. Uh, the list goes on and on and on. A Duncan Robinson, a Tobias Harris. Tobias Harris probably needs six games to have a chance of putting up a high score. But you get the idea. For example, you shouldn't try to substitute Sabonis for DeMar DeRozan just because you think DeMar might get two games. Uh, because Sabonis is going to put up a massive score if they win and they get one game, or if he has a poor performance, they most likely will lose, and so he'll put up a massive score his second game. But yeah, for game week 49, I think the lineups that are going to end up at the top of the leaderboards and scoring those elite prizes and getting off to a really good start in the playoff long leaderboard are going to be the teams that have role players that play two games as opposed to one. And with that being said, I think that about does it for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you made it this far, please make sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel. I'm really hoping to put out content more consistently once again, now that things in my personal life have become a little less chaotic. So thanks again for watching, and I'll see you guys next video. Please clap.